Hey there YouTube, this is Kristen and uh, I'm using this really crappy webcam to make this video because uh, my camera got stolen which uh, really kind of sucks. Um, it's raining and uh, wow, it was kind of uh, treacherous on the roads today. Um, I just got in and I wanted to make a quick video because I haven't made a video in a long 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 time. I know that. Um, and so many things have happened. Um, so uh, just a couple of things. Of course, uh, no surprise, the small town Republican uh, judge uh, ruled uh, in a summary judgment um, that Nikki Aragus is a dude, um, is what he, you know, ruled uh, based on the uh, laughable Littleton v. Prang. Um, of course, that's being appealed to the 13th uh, Circuit Court of Appeals, which is a Democratic uh, court. Um, so I think that it'll at least have a fair chance there. Uh, the, the, the fact that the Wharton judge didn't even grant a trial. He didn't uh, address any of the uh, medical uh, information that was submitted to the court. He didn't say it out. He, he didn't address any of it. Basically, he just endorsed Littleton, which the Littleton sex test is that um, at the moment of birth, a god comes down and sexes each and every one of us. And that's how sex is given. Uh, and then the doctor uh, writes down what sex God gave us. Um, that's literally what uh, Littleton says. Of course, it's inane and ridiculous um, for any number of reasons. Um, and it's, of course, based on Corbett versus Corbett, which is English, now basically 40-year-old, overturned English law because uh, Judge Harberger claimed that he couldn't find any any other transgender law to base his decision upon, so he had to use foreign law, which is strange because the country is full of transgender decisions that support transsexual marriage. Um, and so I made a post about refuting that. Um, you know, of course, here in Houston, we had another transgender murder. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, the media spin uh, was in full swing, and that all comes from HPD. HPD has never once, not once, not once, ever reported the facts surrounding a transgender murder correctly, not once. Not once. Um, and they have been rather reticent to even consider using professional standards when reporting when issuing press releases to the media. Of course, they're not going to use the AP style guide. They're not going to use GLAD style guide. They're not going to consider any of the professional standards. They're just going to use the good old boy standard. Because why? Because they can. Um, so, uh, you know, the community had a meeting with the police chief um, last Friday. And so we're working on that. We had a big breakthrough with uh, Covenant House. Of course, Covenant House is the youth shelter uh, that had classically refused to provide uh, shelter to transgender children. Um, it had a long history of just throwing them out onto the streets. And I got to deal with the results of their actions for years and years. It was in 2000 that uh, a woman named Brenda Thomas and I first began to try to work with Covenant House and to get them to uh, be professional in their treatment of transgender youth. And uh, it took more than a decade of fighting. But finally, 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 that fight is won. And, of course, the Houston transgender community not only won those protections for Houston transgender homeless youth, 
but we won those protections for youth across the Americas. Why? Because they're going this the the changes that Houston has made uh, will be implemented throughout Covenant House campuses throughout this continent. And so that means that a lot of trans youth are going to get services when uh, historically they've been denied services. Uh, Covenant House Houston went into this being a faith-based organization. They're no longer a faith-based organization. They went into this with archaic notions and now children or youth, homeless youth, they're housed according to their gender identity. They are uh, addressed with the correct pronouns. They've instituted a safe zone environment. So I, there's lots and lots of good things happening, uh, lots of changes, you know. Um, I think the Houston trans community has gotten where it's gotten because we just don't stop. We keep on fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. Um, and our goal is just 14th Amendment equality. That's all we want. Um, so lots of good things have happened, some uh, bad things, you know, when um, last Monday when the trans woman was murdered. Of course, the media said that she was a man in a dress. She was actually a transsexual woman. And uh, we went out to where she was murdered. It's, it's not a good area of town. And uh, I went out there the day that she was murdered and started talking to everyone on the streets, just asking them about transgender stuff and about this person who had been killed. And it turns out that the media just had it wrong, HPD had it wrong, they reported basically everything incorrectly and of course sensationalized everything. This woman was, she was shot in the head and then thrown away with the trash at an apartment dumpster. The next day we, we set up a memorial and, uh, you know, this being, uh, again, not the best area of town, we kind of, uh, you know, and of course there was a murder right where we were standing. Someone murdered a trans woman and we're, here we are, a bunch of transgender people standing where she, mur she was murdered. We were kind of expecting, well, we thought that we would get some Snickers or something, and we didn't. People came up and shared in the memorial. We weren't there 10 minutes, and a woman, uh, she was a grandmother of a transgender child, uh, came up to us and asked us to please, please, please help her transgender granddaughter. That's why community is important. If there wasn't any kind of cohesive transgender community, there would have been any response to this murder. No one would have been there to speak the truth to the spin, to the sensationalism. No one would have done the memorial. And if we hadn't done the memorial, uh, then this woman's uh, transgender granddaughter wouldn't have gotten help. So, you know, as with most things, it's two steps forward, one step back. But, uh, you know, lots of things have been happening recently here in Houston, so I just wanted to make a quick update before, you know, uh, before work and uh, just fill everybody in. I'll, I'll leave links uh, to some of the things that uh, have been going on 
in the description area. Um, thanks, y'all. Peace.